Francisco just annexed Portugal, and he formed Nationalist Iberia. Well, help the Portuguese people enjoy their new national anthem. They're gonna be hearing it a lot. So we've done a video in the past where the Germans and the Soviet Union joined forces. That was called the Berlin-Moscow Alliance. This, however, is called the unholy alliance between the US and Germany, because both these nations are gonna be going into a crusade against communism. In this timeline, FDR hates the commies more than he hates places that don't offer some sort of ramp. Now, obviously, this is a pretty popular path in the US focus tree, but let's see how this plays out in 1936. All right, so right away, I, I guess the US are declaring war. Let's see how this crusade goes. And of course, Roosevelt is calling in his new buddy. That's that's very sweet of him. Now, I don't think there's gonna be any immediate conflict. It's gonna take, you know, some time, I guess. They still gotta both take down the punching bag of Europe. I'm just trying to figure out what the UK and France are gonna do. Are they gonna be all right without North American support? Uh, maybe that's not even the right question. Are they gonna be okay with uh, this North American threat? Oh, that's right. So the only European power that's gonna be supporting Franco is Mussolini. All right, well, have fun with that because, uh, yeah, Germany's at war, so they can't send anything over. Oh, but wait a second. No, it's gonna be okay. Uh, Republican Spain doesn't have anyone supporting them since Stalin's at war too. All right, all right. Maybe he's got a chance. I guess we'll see. Now, as a little reminder, the German-Soviet alliance did really well. Like, that was probably the most dominant we've ever seen the AI. I don't know if we're gonna see the same thing today. I mean, it's, it's gonna be tough to top. Also, the US was forced to go fascist in order to get this to continue to work, which that's a pretty big deal, because now that means that, well, they're starting to influence everyone in the Western Hemisphere. This will probably lead to many new Axis members. It's 1938, by the way, and world tension's already at 86%. That is a good sign this is going to be a fun one. We also just had two fascist civil wars pop up in Latin America. All right, I expect a lot more of this. Francisco, by the way, did unbelievably pull out the win in Iberia. So this is, uh, yeah, this is starting to get a little scary. Well, I guess this is one small piece of good news. Um, but then again, I don't think it would have mattered either way. Wow, Mexico's actually going to win the civil war. I'm surprised because almost everywhere else in this region is going fascist. Either way, I'm pretty sure this is going to end very, very badly for you guys. It's just a matter of time. And we also have our first European war that I guess actually have conflict in it at least. Yugoslavia versus Bulgaria. All right. Seems like this is going to be pretty one-sided. Oh boy. Okay, some, something bad's going to happen from this. Iran joined the allies because Turkey declared war on Iran. Well, I thought this would be the conflict that would lead to World War II but they're doing pretty all right. They're not joining any factions. Oh God, th this is not good. Uh, luckily the Soviets don't have to deal with any immediate uh, border conflicts, so they can just kind of focus on this. It's a non-aligned uprising. I think they should be able to handle them. Good, good, okay. Hirohito formed his co-prosperity sphere. I was afraid he'd join the Axis. He's not supposed to do that, but we've seen that in the past. Again, just, this is why he's my favorite Hoi 4 anime character. Yeah, I don't think I've ever said this, but uh, this would have been a great time for Poland just to have join the allies. Yeah, this wasn't the best move for him. I'm pretty shocked that Turkey's about to capitulate without anyone ever letting him in. I understand you don't want to go to war with the allies right now, but world tension is at 100%. Well, uh, look who joined the party. All right, who cares? Oh shit, okay, well that actually makes it a pretty big deal because the peace treaty just happened. I'm assuming they've already joined the allies. All right, well, I don't know what else I expected. Uh, of course it was Italy. Let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Holy shit. Right, well, this is amazing. France clearly wasn't ready for this war. Where are all their divisions? Okay. I I'm assuming they might have been back in the Middle East because they were trying to take out Turkey. And now they got Yugoslavia on their side. So this is looking very good for the fascists. We also have Franco taking out Portugal. But you know, that team is still dealing with a huge mess. This is not going to be fun. And of course, Adolf's about to attack Poland because... That's just what he fucking does. Now, most importantly, this free American empire needs to get rid of Canada, like, as soon as possible. And they need to help out somehow in the British Isles, because the German AI always has trouble here. And hopefully this old French dude is able to help Italy in the African front, because he's probably going to need it. Francisco just annexed Portugal, and he formed Nationalist Iberia. Well, I hope the Portuguese people enjoy their new national anthem. <laughs> They're going to be hearing it a lot. For some reason, a Romanian-Hungarian war just popped up, as well as we've got a Danzig war on the horizon. All right, so obviously the Canadians were not going to last very long. Now let's see how the Americans are doing navally, at least in Europe. Uh, okay, I actually expected a lot better than this. That that can't be good. Oh, Finland, this, this is not going to end well for you. 
I understand you needed money, but a gangbang is not always the way to go. All right, so here it is. This is where the real test of this video comes into play. And I'm very lucky that this scenario kind of played out somewhat historical. I mean, we've got an Adolf Hitler that's at war with Poland, the Soviet Union. They've already taken out France and the UK. Will the American support, though, be enough to help them win? Wait a second, this isn't good. Why, why is Stalin at war with China? Japan is also at war with China. I, I don't understand this. I was just about to say, he's looking okay everywhere else. I mean, at least for the most part, he did have that civil war, so I'm sure he's not as strong as he usually is. Also, this conflict between China and the Soviet Union just popped up. There's now this front over here. All right, well, I think it's safe to assume the Chinese are not gonna have a fun time. All in the Axis are now getting help from Franco, who's actually not doing too bad in this campaign. Anyways, uh, the Polish war doesn't seem to be going as smoothly as they'd like. Yeah, they're actually losing a lot of territory. What the fuck? All right, well, that's definitely something you don't see every day. At the very least, this will distract the US AI, or at least somewhat here. They still gotta deal with a lot of other Axis members. Damn, uh, Berlin just fell to the Polish. And this is only Poland here. Like, it's not like the Soviets are over here contributing at all. I, I don't, I don't get this game. To make matters worse, I think old Adolf's gonna go after Benny Lux because that, that's just totally necessary. I mean, you've already killed France. I don't get the point of going after the European speed bump. I'm waiting for Adolf to tell me it's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank, but Poland is continuing to take more territory. Please tell me it's gonna stop. It's gotta eventually stop. Poland's got no manpower. There are a few allied troops over here, but not many. I mean, keep in mind, the Soviets are still dealing with the Chinese. It's not like they're sending all their divisions to Europe, which, by the way, I, I think China's gonna capitulate here soon. The American military is in Europe, supporting the Nazis, and this, this front is still the same. It, it hasn't really changed. This is crazy. The, even the country that can't beat a bunch of fucking birds is now invading the Philippines. That's a minor Axis member, and sometimes the AI just completely forgets about them. I, I don't know what's going on here. As well as the Japanese are about to win their war against all of China, which is a big deal because obviously Stalin can now focus on what's going on over here. Oh, I think that's it. I think Hentai Island is about to save the Axis from complete embarrassment. They're going after the Soviet Union, which means obviously that's gonna be a pretty huge distraction in the East, as well as Germany is finally doing better against Poland. They, they should be able to take them out here soon and then and then they can move out towards Moscow. I mean, unless Joseph thinks he can do this all by himself, which it's possible. He hasn't taken much damage at all, at least so far in this video. He's gonna have to fight a pretty tough two-front war though. He also just got Michael the First on his side, which is definitely gonna help as Poland dies up in the north here. There's the peace deal, and if you were unsure before, clearly the US is putting in a lot of work. Yeah, Hitler wouldn't have won that, obviously, if, uh, if they weren't there in Europe, just by looking at this peace deal. Things are not really getting much easier though. I mean, everyone at this point is at war with the Axis, and they still gotta take down Benilux, because that, that's gonna be annoying. Yeah, but I did notice there were a few naval invasions that were happening in the British Isles, so this is gonna be a long-term problem, especially if uh, the UK can't support some of their allies. Oh, damn, I, I, I didn't even realize this. Uh, I guess the fall of that faction just meant Brazil has to die. They were doing pretty well down here, too. Pretty insane-looking map. At least not when it comes to the Eastern Hemisphere. It's not until you look at the New World where, uh, yeah, clearly things are a little different. This thing is now formed, which uh, explains why everything looks maybe a little bit darker. Um, they also declared war on Denmark, because you might as well. Interestingly, you can now see a couple of American divisions fighting for the Germans against the Soviets in the Eastern Front. Just kind of a weird thing to see. Well, I think this is it. There's just no way only the Soviet Union and the UK at this point are gonna be able to stop all these enemies. The interesting thing here though is, without Japan's help, would they have been able to do this? That's kind of insane to me because for a second there, it looked like Germany and America were gonna lose. And that was with the help of Benito and Francisco. I think we would see very different results if, if Japan didn't join in. This is one of the biggest things though. The American Navy is just dominating. They can push their divisions wherever they need to go. Uh, and actually at this point, they're the only ones that are really moving against the Soviets. Well, there it is. And surprisingly, I've never seen this before, but when it comes to fascists, they always take the land for themselves. In this case, Germany gave most of the land to that Russian uprising and they were actually not aligned. Well, here's what the first peace deal looks like. We still have another one, but um, interesting to see these guys in so much power. And here's the next one, Treaty of 
Brazzerville. Uh, we've got Germany taking 104 states. That's more like it. Italy taking 20. Uh, that's actually about it because Japan wasn't really involved much against the Allies. Wait a second, who the hell got all these puppets? I'm guessing the US? I, I think it's the US. Nope, not really. The Americans barely got anything. That's weird. I mean, I I'm just saying guys, they did most of the work. I, I don't think I'm being biased about this. Yeah, not only did Adolf take a pretty good chunk of territory, he just puppeted like the entire world. Literally, I, I think he puppeted almost everyone. Well, anyways guys, this was a pretty interesting world and not in the way that I, I thought it was gonna be. I mean, for a second there, this unholy alliance almost got their ass whooped. I mean, damn, did we need another failed crusade? Either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And as always, big thanks to my Patreon supporters, Franco is Thick, Leather Daddy Lennon, Matthew Rembish, Free Cruise, Swiss Argo, Jake Paul's My Daddy, Tyler, Jason Wright, Sean Spillman, Jen's the Love Disc, Matthew King, Ruse for Occasion, Matthew E, Jung Cooks Bay, Elijah Senpai, Wyone, and Elfie C.